Remember, an observational study is one that compares the values of the response and explanatory variables without trying to influence either one. It really is a, a researcher just kind of stepping back, watching what's going on, and making observations. We're going to talk about several different types of observational studies, here, and you'll notice they kind of fit into three broad care, uh, categories. There's ones that focus on the past, ones that focus on the present, and ones that focus on the future. So thinking about the past, right? Um, retrospective studies, or they're also called case control studies, look backwards in time by reviewing historical records. For example, uh, census records, military records, uh, sometimes uh, primary uh, historical records like people's diaries. Uh, and there, there's some strengths and weaknesses here. Uh, on the strength side, uh, these are cost effective relative to, to the other studies we're going to talk about. And they're also effective for the study of rare events, right? Things like rare diseases or earthquakes, for example. Those are difficult to study in, in real time in the present because there are so few of them to look at, right? Your sample size is by, by force going to be very small. Or if you look back over a period of, of decades, assuming that historical data is available, uh, you can get uh, a much larger sample size. Uh, there's also, generally speaking, less time needed to, to conduct this kind of study uh, be, because the things that you're looking for, that you're investigating, have already occurred. So you, you're not kind of sitting around waiting for them to happen so that you can make your observations, take your notes, etc. cetera. Um, on, on the weakness side, this is... Uh, particularly prone to bias. In, in one kind of retrospective study, for example, um, you ask, the, the researcher asks people about their prior experiences, about their memories of specific events. For example, a researcher trying to do, trying to do research on uh, the Great Depression, for example, uh, could go in and speak to people who were alive during that time and ask them uh, their impressions and memories and that makes these kinds of studies particularly susceptible to uh, recall and survivor bias. We talked about survivor bias already. That, that's where only, only the people in, in this case who are still alive are available to answer your questions and they may not be representative of the entire population from that time. Uh, for example, we're talking about something like the Great Depression that happened decades ago, um, people who had little or no access to health care aren't currently still going to be alive. So you're you're more likely to be getting uh, the impressions of people who, for whatever reason, had the resources to take better care of themselves. Um, and recall bias, that's just, you know, memory fades. Mem memories are, are fallible. And when you're asking some people to remember what happened in the past, uh, you, you have to take into account the possibility that their memories uh, aren't going to be entirely accurate. Uh, Cross-sectional studies, these, these are, this is the present tense version. Cross-sectional studies collect data at a single point in time. These are also relatively quick, uh, relatively cheap, easy to conduct. Um, data on all variables is generally only collected once. Now, uh, as far as weaknesses go, um, it, it can be difficult to determine whether um, the exposure or the outcome came first, where there, there can be kind of a reverse causality that takes place. Uh, these also aren't suitable for studying rare events or events that only last for a short duration. Because uh, again, th this was a, a plus for a retrospective studies. With a cross-sectional study, there, there may not be enough of a sample size for you to really really get a reasonable idea of what, what, what's going on. Um, and e again, e these are also susceptible to certain biases, such as recall bias that we just talked about. Uh, social acceptability bias is an issue here. There, there's a great example of this. Back in the 19, uh, around the 1940s, the, the Kinseys were, were researchers who were doing uh, research into human sexuality. They, they did some very extensive 
uh, very detailed research, more extensive or, or detailed than had ever been done before. But this is a difficult topic. When, when you're asking people about a sensitive subject, you have to be concerned about their answers. Are they being entirely truthful with you? Um, are they maybe, maybe not giving you complete information because they're embarrassed? Are they giving you inaccurate information because uh, they're, they're trying to improve the way they're perceived? Um, so uh, again, th those are some specific kinds of biases that are a particular concern with this kind of study. So on the future tense side, we have a perspective or a longitudinal study. This kind of study tracks whatever the, the group or the, or the population of interest is over time. Um, for example, uh, these studies are often used to study development and lifespan issues. Uh, you, you might start with a group of people and revisit, right? meet with them every year and kind of ask them the same set of questions just to just to see how uh, they're changing over time. Now, th this is a great kind of study. You get great information from, th from this about um, the long-term effects of things, but uh, these are expensive. Uh, it requires a significant commitment of, of resources and time. Uh, and uh, there, you always have to be concerned about not, not your sample size on day one, but your sample size at the end of the study, right? Because you need to plan ahead thinking that people are going to drop out, you're going, people are going to move away, you're going to lose track of them, people are going to die. That your, your sample at, by the end is going to be smaller than it was at the beginning for a variety of reasons, uh, which again uh, drives up the cost. Uh, and, and it's also possible to avoid some ethical issues with this type of study that are inherent in experiments. For example, if you're trying to, if you, if you're studying the impact of smoking, we know that smoking has negative health effects. You really can't conduct an experiment where you ask people to smoke and then watch to see what negative impacts they have. But with this kind of study, you start by finding people who, who smoke already. Right, so you're, you're not trying to, to influence them or, or do something to them that would have a negative impact. Right? You're, you're just kind of taking advantage uh, of their existing behaviors. Okay, so that gives you kind of a brief overview of behavioral, um, behavioral studies. And the next lecture, we're, we're going to kind of give the same treatment uh, to different kinds of experimental studies.